Fish and chip shops aren't your typical crime scenes, but a feud over this local business turned so ugly one man ended up in jail, another lost his home and the third was left fearing for his life. It's a legal saga so explosive someone actually tried to blow up the shop twice. It is a civil matter. Nice. You let me go or I will have you charged. Call the police. Nobody knows what we've been through. And I don't wish it to anyone. Don't you think it looks a bit suspicious? Absolutely. Did you try to blow up the fish and chip shop? No. I was set up. I don't believe I should have been convicted at all. Where is the justice? That's all I ask. It's not hard to find a convicted criminal who'll swear black and blue that they're innocent. But Joe Palermo's case is a different kettle of fish. Jailed in a criminal court, vindicated in a civil court, and it all started over a humble fish and chip shop. Joe and Frank Palermo bought the fish and chip shop business in 2005. It was called Minetti Seafoods. The landlord was Lou Minetti. In those early days, what, what was your relationship like with Lou Minetti? Absolutely fantastic. You know, couldn't ask for a, a better bloke. Lou Minetti is a wealthy property developer whose family originate from Calabria. The Palermos were originally from Sicily, but they considered each other family. Back in the early days, yeah, you know, we got along well, good relationship. Their relationship as landlord and tenant worked fine for eight years. During that time, the Palermos say they paid over a million bucks in rent until the bad blood started to boil. This is CCTV of the night Luminetti wanted the Palermos out of the fish and chip shop. In the early hours of the morning, Mr Minetti arrives with real estate agents and police officers ordering the Palermos out over unpaid rent he claims totaled $75,000. The Palermos dispute that amount, claiming it was partially offset by building repairs they'd paid for, as well as cash amounts provided to Mr Minetti, including some deposited into his TAB account. I never expected Minetti to do that. After the lockout, we found out what he's like. The Palermos lost their business and decided to sue Lou Minetti. A Supreme Court would eventually find the lockout was illegal. But before that happens, this case takes a very sinister twist. Well, unknown persons attempted to cause an explosion of the premises by releasing gas from gas storage cylinders. You know anything about that? No, I didn't even know that occurred. This is a police interview conducted with Joe Palermo after two attempts were made to blow up their old fish and chip shop, still owned by Lou Minetti, but with a new tenant. Do you bear any ill will towards him? Not ill will. I'm disappointed in yeah, the relationship that family-wise we had. Got no vendetta or anything like that. You know, my dad's pursuing it, the legal side of things, you know. The first attempt involved a homemade ignition device alongside gas cylinders that were turned on outside the shop. It failed to ignite. Four days later, the shop is ram raided by a stolen black ute that contained a sparkler bomb. It too failed to ignite. Joe Palermo would eventually be charged with two counts of dishonestly, with a view to gain, damaged property by fire. Did you try to blow up the fish and chip shop? No, I did not. It would it'd be pointless to do that. Why would I try and blow up our own equipment, which I've got a civil proceeding going in, the court case in Sydney, and no insurance? I was set up. The Palermo's equipment and stock hadn't been returned since the lockout, despite a new tenant taking over. The car used in the ram raid had been stolen from a former employee who was friends with Mr Palermo. He gave evidence that Joe Palermo organised its theft and had access to the vehicle. No fingerprints were found inside the car, but Mr Palermo's DNA was. Your DNA was found on a shopping bag that contained the homemade device. How do you explain that? Well, it was found in a car that I did use, you know, in the shop multiple times, you know, to go down to Aldi to buy stuff for the shop or 
to do deliveries or anything like that. And it also had six other people's fingerprints on there or DNA on there as well. The attempted firebombing was the second set of criminal charges laid on Joe Palermo. A few days after the fish and chip shop was attacked, he was arrested by police and accused of planning a hit on Luminetti. Why were you sitting outside your landlord's home with a shotgun? I went round to, to see him. You know, we tried to contact him multiple times prior, but no success and never had any intention to go and do any harm to him. So what were you there for? I was there, to, you know, to, to see if we could come out you know, to an arrangement I was about to lose my house. Joe will eventually lose his house. So will his mum and dad. He explained to police he'd used the gun and a baton to hunt rabbits and didn't realise they were still in the car. Did you intend to use these items? Absolutely not. No, no, no not at all. You know, that's just not in my character. Don't you think it looks a bit suspicious? Absolutely. I've, yeah, you have a firearm. Absolutely, yeah. And you're yeah. sitting in the street where he lives. Correct. The police made the decision to arrest him after phone intercepts revealed he was planning to give Luminetti a love tap. What did you mean when you said you wanted to give him a love tap? One on the chin. Just to say, hey, look, you know, we can't take everything we've got, everything we own. Luminetti denies taking anything from the Palermos. He says the incident left him fearing for his life. He declined our request for an on-camera interview, but I spoke with him by phone. What sort of a toll has this all taken on you? My mother uh, was Joe Palermo was initially charged with conspiracy to murder, but pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of stalking with violence while possessing a weapon, and served eight months in jail. He didn't go there in intention to shoot him. If we wanted to shoot him, we would have, we would have got him the same night, the, the, the lockout. We knew we were, we were right that the, it was an illegal lockout. This is why I spent five, $500,000 plus to pursue him in the court of law. The Palermos were locked out of their fish and chip shop five years ago and have been fighting Luminetti in the Supreme Court ever since. As the civil case dragged on, the legal bills mounted and the Palermos ran out of funds. So they had to represent themselves at the Supreme Court and won. A judge ruling the lockout was illegal and awarding them around $300,000. Lawyer Richard Mitry. In, in any court, it's, it's complicated even for lawyers. So if you don't have a lawyer and you're facing incredibly difficult concepts of law, it's not easy. So to succeed in those circumstances is remarkable. But any joy at that court victory was short-lived. Please are here to assist me. I am now actually in the white. I'm in possession of this property. I am now directing you to leave the property immediately. In July this year, Frank Palermo had his Gold Coast home repossessed by National Australia Bank. It was security for a business loan over the shop, and with no income and mounting legal bills, the bank foreclosed. It is a civil matter. You let me go or I will have you charged. Call the Joe Palermo had already lost his house and the thought of his parents losing theirs is too much to bear. Call the police! Call the police! Let me go right now. Frank Palermo is bankrupt. The business loan was in his name. The house is in joint names with his wife, Frances. I'm not leaving my home. I paid for it with sweat and tears. Francis. It's my home. Nobody can take it from me. But the bank has a court order to take the property. You have come onto my property no, and obstructed me. It's not property anymore. It's the bank's property. Francis Palermo is led away in tears. The eviction is complete, but officers now decide to arrest Joe Palermo, who retreated to a property down the street. His mum runs to his aid, but is knocked to the ground. Joe Palermo is charged with obstructing police. His parents are now broke, living in a rental property and wishing they'd never moved from Melbourne to the Gold Coast. We came up in to this country, to this city 13 years ago with over $2 million in, in my pocket today. I've got, I've got nothing. 
Frank went bankrupt, as you, you probably know, and, 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 and lost has lost his house. You feel bad. Despite his pleas of innocence, Joe Palermo was convicted and jailed by a magistrate over the attempted firebombing of his old vision chip shop. He appealed and was released on bail and last week faced a district court judge who would determine his freedom. You think you'll have a win in there today? I do, yeah. And you won't have to go back to jail? I definitely hope not. Not something I didn't do anyway. Judge Sweeney upheld his appeal, quashing his conviction and the jail term he was facing. <laughs> she ruled the magistrate didn't have the power to effectively downgrade his charges to attempting to cause damage to property by fire, a legal technicality. But now we are so relieved, so relieved now we're taking our son home. It's been a long, long time. We've finally got justice. But even this victory is bittersweet. The Palermos have virtually nothing their Supreme Court payout of 300 grand was a fraction of what they wanted. And Lou Minetti is still pursuing them in court over the unpaid rent that started all the trouble. Now what we have is an old man out of his home, another one who's been to jail, a landlord who's been sued for several hundred thousands of dollars, and you never would have thought that such a saga would come from such a humble little business. Yeah, well, the ones that were in the right, the ones that were suffering, no wonder why people take to their own hands. Not that I did, but I'm saying. Dreadful saga. The fish shop is now under new ownership and is no longer connected to the Palermos or Lou Minetti.